Hello folks and welcome back to another Rise of Nations guide video. In today's video, we'll be looking at a rather interesting topic, which is to say ideology. So by the end of this video, hopefully you can choose the best ideology that fits your playstyle and know more about ideologies in general. So without wasting any more time, let's jump straight into the video. Let's take a look at the different ideologies inside this game. So there are 7 different ideologies in this game and they include non-aligned, socialism, communism, nationalism, fascism, liberalism, and democracy. All of these 7 ideologies are divided into 3 different groups. The top one is the non-aligned, the block to the left is for the socialism and communism, the block to the center is for the freedom boys which is to say liberalism and democracy, and the block to the right is for the nationalistic and the fascist boys. Now, when you start off the game, most nations will be starting off with a non-aligned ideology. But be mindful that not all nations start with non-aligned. There are a few nations that start with a specific ideology, and they include democracy is the United States, Japan, Brazil, and India. For communism, it is Cuba and North Korea. For socialism, it is Vietnam, China, and Laos. First ideology is the non-aligned. This one is, again, most of the nations in this game would start off with this ideology. Just like its name suggests, it does not lean to democracy or fascist or communist. I do not suggest you playing as this ideology, but if you really do not know what you are doing yet, then this is probably the best ideology for you. This one doesn't have any advantages, nor it have any disadvantages. Second ideology on our list here is the socialism communism. For the communism socialism line, this one is best suited for players who want to become a big 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 exporter, an economic powerhouse, and also not to mention a military superpower. So when you switch to this line, there are a few changes that are going to happen in your country. And they include, for manpower, for the socialist country, your manpower will be increased by 40%. For communism, your manpower will literally be increased by 100%. For your military upkeep, both ideology doesn't affect the military upkeep. For tax income, a socialist country will lose their tax income by just 10%, while a communist country will get their tax cut by an enormous 25%. War justification time. For a socialist country, your justification time would be cut by only 15%. Communist country would get a cut by 25% to their war justification time. Unrest reduction. This one only applies to communism, but essentially whenever you invade a country, your unrest goes down slower by 25%. Reinforcement cost. For socialism, the cost to reinforce your damage unit will be cut by 15% and for communism, it will cut by 40%. Base stability and war exhaustion. For socialist country, your base stability will be increased by 3% and your war exhaustion would be lower by 0.0125%. For communism, you will gain a noticeable 8% boost in your base stability and 0.03% less in war exhaustion. You will also gain this thing called stability hit on offensive war by 1%. Factory output. For socialism, these are the things that these two ideology really shines out. Because if you switch to a socialist country, your factory output will increase by 50%. And if you switch to communism, your country will get a huge boost to your factory output, which is to say an enormous 125%. The third line of ideology here is the liberalism democracy line. For this line, you can call it the freedom ideology, and it is best suited for players who want to be more peaceful. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Yeah. Mark my words. But anyways, let's take a look at it in more details. For manpower, liberal country will be the same, so your manpower will not get any increase or decrease. For democracy, however, you will be getting a noticeable 10% less manpower. 
For your upkeep, liberal country military upkeep will be increased by 5%. And for democracy, your country will have to spend 15% more than other people just to have a military. Tax money. This is why this ideology exists. Because of money. Yes, uh, this is your biggest strength. Because when switching to liberalism, you'll be getting 40% more money from the tax alone. And when you switch to democracy, you will be a mad lad in collecting money from their people because you will literally get 110% extra tax income. Justification time. For liberal country, your justification time to go to war will be increased by 30% and for democracy, your justification time will be increased by an enormous 75%. Unrest reduction. For liberals, this is a good news for my freedom voice because your unrest reduction will be faster by 25%. And for my democratic country, you'll be getting a buff to your unrest reduction. To be specific, it is 40% faster than normal players. Base stability and war exhaustion. For liberals, switching here won't hurt your base stability and war exhaustion, although you will lose 1% of your stability when you go on an offensive war. For democracy, you will suffer more than liberals because you will lose 3% of your stability by just going on an offensive war. So a word from me before we proceed. I suggest that you should not really play this ideology because if you want to expand and invade, then it goes against the core of these ideologies. But if you instead want to be Switzerland doing Switzerland things, then this will be a perfect ideology. The fourth line of ideology here is the nationalism socialism line. This is for the players who want to become a warlord. So let's take a look at it in more details. Manpower. Nationalist country will get you a 15% increase buff to your manpower while fascist country will give you a noticeable boost in manpower at 35%. Upkeep for your military. For nationalistic country, you will be spending 25% less money on keeping your military alive. Fascism ideology will give you a big big cut to your spending on military. Specifically, it is an enormous 60% cut. Tax income. For nationalist country, switching to nationalism doesn't affect your tax income. For fascist country, however, your tax will be cut by 10%, just 10%. Justification time. This is the part that makes these two ideologies shine. For nationalist country, your justification time will be decreased by 25%. For fascism, it is even greater because fascist country will literally have their justification time cut by half, 50%. Unrest reduction. Nationalism, for you, you don't have any effect on your unrest reduction, while fascism will have an enormous 30% slower unrest reduction. Base stability and war exhaustion. For nationalism, if you switch to that ideology, it will give you a 5% boost in your base stability, also a 1% more stability on an offensive war. For fascism, you will gain a 12% boost in your base stability and a 2% boost to your stability by going on an offensive. <laughs> Welcome to the conclusion part where I will be summing up the entirety of this video. So in my own opinion, you should just switch to three ideologies that is good and they are socialism, nationalism and fascism. Communism might be good for some of you guys but it takes things too seriously and too far. But really it really depends on your playstyle and no one can decide that except for you. So you choose it yourself, the one that fits your own playstyle. Well, that was it for the long video and I really hope that you guys actually learn something from it and use it to your advantage in game when you play it. And also if you do, then smash that like and subscribe button because it really helps us out content creator. But anyways, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.